Alright everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Iman Shu and we are continuing our journey of understanding and learning Salesforce Apex and mastering Salesforce development. So for those of you who are seeing this video as the very first video of this playlist, I'll encourage you to start from the first chapter. This is a playlist wherein we are at chapter 63. And uh, for those of you who are continuing this uh, use cases, let's jump into use case 4. Yeah. Write a method that queries all contacts associated to an account name and returns a list of email IDs of all these contacts. Okay, so in Salesforce, account is the parent, contact is the child. One account can have multiple contacts associated to it, right? What we want to do is we want to create a method that accepts the account name, right? Some account name. Let's consider that the name will be unique of the account. Okay, let's consider that. That's the assumption. So you query out all of the contacts associated to that account name and you give the result as the email addresses of all these contacts. Okay, so if this account A and it has three contacts contact B, C, and D, and each, ha each have an email address, the method should return three email addresses. Okay. So for those of you who are confident enough to do this on your own, please go ahead, pause this video here, try this out, execute it, debug it, put in your best practices, put in everything that you've learned as part of the last 62, 63 chapters that we have done, and then probably post your answer on the comments or somewhere, send it to me, yeah? Great. Let's get started. We'll be doing this on Visual Studio Code, and I'll create a new Apex class. I'll say create Apex class, Apex use case 4. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove the constructor we don't need it and i'll just go ahead and create a new method i'll say public static void return contact emails all right and what is this method going to accept it is going to ex expect an account name right now what do i need to do first of all let's let's sort this in our head first once it is sorted in the head it can very well be written in the code right so use the account name to query the account ID. All right. Use the account ID to query all contacts whose parent account is this account ID. Yeah. Once we have all the contacts, loop through each, sorry, loop through each contact and extract the email address yeah and then finally return the list of email addresses does that make sense it does right so what should be the return type first of all for this method it should be a list of string so i'll just go ahead and say instead of void it should be list of string that is sorted and to create that list of string let's create a variable email list is equal to new list of string this will currently be empty but this is what i'll return to the method as the res res response so in terms of the format and the syntax we are good right now let's go ahead and use the logic that we have just written so what do i need to do i first of all need to query the account yeah so consider the assumption is that the name will be unique. Okay, so I'll only get one account. So I'll say ID from account where name is equal to, I need to bind a variable. So I'll use the colon and I'll put the account name variable that is from the method. Okay, and I'll put a limit one here. Okay. Now what will I do? I'll put a check account name dot size is equal to equal to one only then proceed or else don't even proceed correct so if account name of size dot size is equal to equal to one that means i have successfully found an account record yeah so if i have found an account record should i be good enough to do the contact query now yes i should be good enough to do that query so i'll say select id comma let's say select id from contact where now what is the relationship field between account and contact it is account id so i'll say where account id is equal to colon account name of zero dot id did you understand what i just did here i want to find out all the contacts right if you have understood socal right you you should understand this line but i'll just rephrase i am querying the id fields of all the contacts which contacts where the account id is equal to whatever came as part of this list because the size was one it will always have the zeroth index and it will give me the dot id operator so this will basically find out all the contacts linked to this particular account that has come from this query 
make sense. All right. So this will give me all the contacts. Now, if I have all the contacts, so if I have all the contacts, meaning I can say if contact records dot size is greater than zero, does that mean I got some records? Yes, I got some records. So I'll say for each contact con in contact records email list dot add. What do I want to add from this contact instance? I want to add the email addresses. So I'll say con dot email okay now since i'm using this email field i have to ensure that i'm querying it also make sense all right and that's all that's all we need to do all right and we can put one more check here we can simply say if con dot email is not equal to null only then go ahead and add it or else the con dot email might end up in a null pointer exception if it does not exist so just for the sake of safety taking those best practices precautions. Okay, are we good? We are good. Let's go ahead and remove all of this and let's try to deploy it. And let's see what happens. So the compilation has failed. Something has gone wrong. What has gone wrong? It says no such column email on entity account. So I've queried the email field on the account, which is which does not exist. So let's get rid of that. Let's put the email field on the contact level. So I'll say id comma email here and I'll say deploy. So deploy has run successfully. Yeah, let's go to Salesforce. Let's refresh this page and let's open Apex use case four. Yeah, Apex use case four, the code is here. Let's quickly query ID comma account dot name from contact where account ID is not equal to null. I'm just trying to figure out all the contacts who have a parent account ID. Yeah, so you see th this is the name that I can pick up. So if I pick Grand Hotels and Resorts Limited, or let's pick up something simple. Yeah, S Force. Okay, so if I pick up S Force, let's go ahead and say System dot Debug Apex Use Case Four dot return contact emails and what is the method name I want to pass I want to pass s force okay let's go ahead and say execute let's see what does this return so it's executed successfully it's opening up the log let's take a look at the debug only statement so it's saying empty there's nothing inside okay which means there's no email is that true let's quickly check let's find out if I say account dot name is equal to s force and I want to query the email field of all these contacts. Let's quickly see execute. Are there contact records? Yes, but there are no email addresses. Yeah, so I'll just say abc at the rate gmail.com and I'll say def at the rate yahoo.com. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and say save rows. So I'm just trying to save the email addresses from developer console. All the red lines have gone away. Let's try the code now and let's see what does it return. executed successfully if I take a look at the debug log I'm seeing that two email addresses have been populated and that was the ask right that was the use case okay so the use case works perfectly fine however what you notice is we have written two queries as part of this particular use case right is it possible that we reduce this to one query is what my ask is right is it possible that I don't have to query it multiple times is it possible it is possible. What can I do? Instead of mapping the account ID here, I can simply map, find me all the contacts where the account dot name is equal to the name that has come. Yeah, why do I need the ID? Let's go ahead and put the name here. That will eliminate the use of this particular query. So one query saved, one Sockle query saved. You saved the limit. Yeah, if I go ahead and say deploy the source, and if I test it out, Okay, there's something wrong here. It says account name does not exist because I removed the query. So I can now get rid of this if condition also. So this can go back one tab and I can get rid of the extra bracket, say save and now say deploy. Okay, deployed successfully. Let's go back. Let's execute it one more time and let's see if the results is sh still showing up or not. It should ideally still show up. You see the result is still showing up. 
all right so we were able to reduce the query to one query instead of two query for a simple use case does that make sense great that was use case number four i'll see you in the next one bye